Welcome back to Bite Sized Neo4j for Data Scientists. My name is Claire Sullivan, and I'm a data science advocate at Neo4j, and here's how you can find me on the internet. This is part 20 of our series, and we've actually started this series within a series, beginning with part 19. We're looking at comparing SQL and Neo4j and when you might want to use one over the other. Um, and so you definitely want to go back and watch that video to see what the data we're looking at is. Um, and the um, we're going to be importing that data into Neo4j today. That's all we're doing today is the import. Um, I'll, all I did was I exported the existing tables from PG admin into CSV files, and those CSV files are in the repository. Okay, reminder of some links here. The first is how to free, create a free Neo4j sandbox instance, and you will definitely want to do that today. You want to create a blank instance. Um, the next one is all the videos in this series. Definitely go back and watch some of the earlier videos on Cypher. It's going to help for today. And lastly is the repository with all the code and the data files that we're going to use today. As a reminder of those data files, this is what it looked like in Postgres and SQL when we were looking at it. We had these tables here. Um, we're going to bring in those tables um, to Neo4j in just a minute here. Um, but like I said, all I did was export using pgadmin those tables to a CSV file. So let me bring in VS Code here. Okay. And um, let's just walk through this part 20.cypher query language file here, which is going to show us how we are. Uh, managing this import. So the first thing that we do is we create some constraints. And what these cr constraints do, they're uniqueness constraints. So for instance, I have this airport node, and my airport nodes have a property, call, or they might have a property called IATA, the airport code. In this case, they all do. And we say that's unique. Okay. And in doing so, what we're creating is an index on that airport code. It makes our queries much faster, much more efficient. Uh, when we do this. Okay, and so we do that for all of the nodes within our graph. So this graph is going to have airports, cities, regions, countries, continents, blah, blah, blah. Okay, first thing we do is we have an airport node list, and it's in the repo here. Let's look at what it looks like here. Okay, so I have, you can see my different uh, columns within this file. I've got a, um, an integer identifier. I've got this airport code that we're going to be using. Um, airport codes can also be represented by ICAO. I don't know what that actually is. We have cities and descriptions of the airport, etc. So all of these, um, these columns here are going to be used as properties for our airport nodes. So here's how we actually import it. We're going to use the load CSV command with headers because there is a header to this CSV file. And then I'm going to say merge. And what merge does is it says, if this airport doesn't exist, we're going to add it to our database. And these curly braces says, I, say I have a property. And that property is called IATA. Okay, and then kind of like a for loop in Python, we have um, this idea from URL as row. So row.iata is whatever's the IATA code for that row. Set, when, once I have my airport, I have my unique airport based on that IATA code, then I'm going to set a bunch of properties. So for instance, I'm setting an, that ID integer. Here's that other type of um, uh, code for the airport. I've got cities and descriptions and regions. Um, now, one thing I want to point out here, runways, is the number of runways um, at that airport. You see this thing, I have two integer. Basically, everything that comes in via load CSV is considered a string, so we're going to cast it as an integer. Same thing um, down here when I have my latitude and longitude, I'm casting that as a float. At some point in the future, Neo4j does do GPS coordinates, so we might turn that into an actual point coordinate, but we'll not do that today. Okay, so we do that for our airports. We're going to do that for the countries as well. Okay, um, so I have a country node list. I have a continent node list. Um, and then um, we're going to start bringing in our relationships or our edges here. Okay, so let's look at what that looks like. There's actually two relationship files. One is based off of integer IDs. The other is based off of those um, those IATA codes. So we're going to use those because that's how we set up our uniqueness constraint. So this here, you can see I have a source node, I have a destination node, and then I have a relationship property called distance. This is the distance between the two airports. So if I look at my cipher, um, I match my source. You know, here's row.source and row.destination. So I've named this node source. I've named this node target. And then I take the source and the target and I say merge into my database a relationship where source, I'm going to say that the relationship name is has route and it's going into target. And then when I create that relationship, I'm going to set the relationship property of distance here. Okay. 
So um, so we do that for all of our airport has routes. And then I also go through here and I make some other relationship types, like an airport is in a city. And that's all coming out of um, the airport nodes. It's a property within the airport node called city. So I'm creating a whole new type of node here called city using the property of the airport node. Okay, so you can go through here and you can see that I've, I create a whole bunch of other nodes and relationships just based off of that one CSV file. Okay, we've gotten to the end now. I've already populated my database. You can just go through and straight run all this stuff yourself. Let's, um, let's take a look at what our, um, our graph model looks like. So I'm going to go into Sandbox and I'm going to use this CallDB schema visualization here. And let's just see what we get. Okay, let's break this out a bit. Okay, so I can see that I have um, these five different node types, one, two, three, four, five. I have airports, and airports have routes to other airports, and they're in regions or on continents. They are in cities or in countries. So you can take a look at what this graph model looks like. We're going to use this as the basis for um, the next several videos. So get a feel for how we create it, tinker around with it. Um, if you want, here's a little bit of homework. See if you can use Cypher, like we did last time, to find airports that are two hops away from Denver. All right. Thank you very much. And we will see you next week. Have fun graphing.